Let's talk about carbon monoxide poisoning. So carbon monoxide is an odorless, tasteless gas. The pathology comes from it binds hemoglobin more tightly than oxygen does, and that forms carboxyhemoglobin. So now the hemoglobin is no longer binding oxygen, and that impairs oxygen transport and utilization. The most common source is a house fire, and otherwise you can have malfunctioning heating systems, uh, motor vehicles operated in poorly ventilated areas, and that can be uh, intentional or non-intentional, and chronically cigarette smoking can also elevate the carboxyhemoglobin levels. So the clinical features are non-specific, but can include headache, nausea, and confusion. Uh, not very commonly, there can be cherry red skin, and you'll have to differentiate between that and cyanide poisoning, which can also happen in fires. There can be coma, loss of consciousness, and seizures, as well as, in severe cases, lactic acidosis and myocardial ischemia. The myocardial ischemia is a marker for increased mortality. So the diagnosis, the diagnosis has to be suspected based on the risk factors and predisposing history. But if you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, then the way to diagnose it is to measure the carboxyhemoglobin level by cooximetry. And if it's above 3% in non-smokers, then that's abnormal. And above 15% in smokers, then it's abnormal and you've made the diagnosis. For other evaluation, an EKG and troponin uh, are sent to evaluate for the myocardial ischemia. Carbon monoxide poisoning can also cause arrhythmias. There can be lactic acidosis in severe cases, and sometimes neuroimaging is undertaken, which by MRI or CT will show globus pallidus abnormalities. And specifically, it will look bright on the T2 on the MRI. So you can see that here. So for treatment, elimination of carbon monoxide is determined by oxygenation and lesser so by minute ventilation. So that's why we use 100% oxygen to basically compete with the carbon monoxide. And that's delivered by a non-rebreathing face mask. Hyperbaric oxygen can be used for severe cases. And you'll treat until the symptoms resolve. You don't have to follow the carboxyhemoglobin levels. For prognosis, so neurocognitive impairment can occur days or months later in up to 40% of patients, and that can include cognitive deficits, personality changes, focal neurologic deficits, and movement disorders.